Hey, what's happening gamers? K-Wing here, and with E3 coming up next month, I thought now would be a good time to bring up my top 10 things I'd like to see in Batman Arkham Knight. No more empty cities. I don't know about all of you, but I'm sick of it. Arkham City was pretty much the Narrows or Old Gotham, and it was empty. Arkham Origins was North and South Gotham, but while bigger to explore, also barren. Though to be fair, people were told to stay in their homes, which you could hear both on the police scanner and from police themselves. Still, the city felt lifeless and dull. At this point, I'd be happy with the Spider-Man video game's moving zombie AI. At least people are present, well, to some extent. Sadly, I'm sure Rocksteady will come up with some excuse that people aren't going to be around in this game. Though in the trailer, we do see people running for their very lives while Two-Face and company shoots them up. So maybe, just maybe, we'll see some law-breaking citizens walking around the city during a gang war. After all, Gotham is huge, and even during the No Man's Land and War Games arc in the comics, people were still present in the city. Not just armies of identical thugs. Which is weird. Listen, I want a city worth fighting for. Not a lifeless one anymore. Azrael's Prophecy Fulfilled now during the side quest, Watcher in the Wings, Batman learns about the Order of St. Dumas for the first time and its Angel of Death. Ezreal then delivers Batman a message that one day Gotham will burn, and while Batman will triumph, he will burn too. Which could be hinting at a possible Batman death in Arkham Knight. Before he vanishes like a ninja, he tells Batman they will meet again. If you look at the logo in Arkham Knight, notice how the bat symbol is on fire. Which leads me to speculate that the Angel of Death will be in Arkham Knight. Possibly the death of Batman too. As much as I'd love to see a battle for the cowl game and Grayson becoming the Bat, cause let's face it, Nightwing doesn't get enough love, I don't think Rocksteady would kill off Bruce Wayne during his 75th year anniversary. Still, I'm curious to see what role the Order of St. Dumas will play in Arkham Knight. The Batwing. Now while it did appear in previous Arkham games and used for fast travel points in Arkham Origins, the Batwing has never fully been playable. I know we have the Batmobile, but a true Bat fan is never satisfied or happy! Remember that! Especially until everything about the Cape Crusader is in a video game. The Arkham games have been pretty close in that field, but if you really think about it, the one true Batman game is LEGO Batman 2 DC Super Heroes, which had an open world Gotham, the Batcave, Wayne Tower, the Bat Family, and all the vehicles were playable. That was awesome. Now, I really want Rocksteady to take it to the next level, creating a true Batman experience that I've waited 20 years for. So please make it happen. Traditional detective elements. So what does that mean exactly? Well, I'm going to tell you. Combat and gadgets already work really well in the Arkham games, and they don't really need to be improved anymore. However, I was not a fan of Batman's ability to rewind time to solve clues. Maybe if this was a Batman Beyond game, because Terry's not as smart as Bruce, then that sci-fi stuff would make sense. But for me, it just kind of dumbed down the Dark Knight and made him rely on his technology to piece together clues, rather than his brilliant mind. See, technology is a tool for Batman, not a cheat sheet. Besides, Origin used this way too much, and it got old super fast. I really liked where Rocksteady was going with solving crimes in City, and I wanted to see more of that. In truth, I'm curious how they will expand on that for the next game, or if it's even included. Hopefully, it will be more than just following a trail of blood, though, and scanning the environments for clues. Batman's better than that. We all know that Batman has brawn, but does he have brains to match Rocksteady? Show us. Joker stays dead. Now, I know some of you might not agree with me on this, since the Arkham games have always revolved around the clown prince of crimes, well, presence. After what happened to Black Mask and Arkham Origins, personally, I'm ready for something new. This town needs an enema, and Joker's death is a fresh idea to this franchise that's desperately needed. Hey, it worked wonders for Batman Beyond, didn't it? <laughs> that's not funny. That's not... <laughs> So look what's happened so far in the Arkham series. In Arkham Knight, the trailer for instance, we saw Gotham erupting into a massive gang war. Plus with the clown gone, it united many of Batman's rogues, unlike the past games where they were always fighting over turf. This time they're actually working together to kill the Bat. Honestly, I think Rocksteady can really pull off a Batman game without the Joker's inclusion. And I know what some of you are thinking. Joker's alive because of the continuity error involving the vial in Batman's hand. It switched places when Batman was knocked unconscious. This proves he's alive. 
Also in the comics, no one stays dead forever, which is a great point and all true, but I think the impact of a dead Joker would be much more fun on Batman's psychosis. Also using the fake Joker Clayface gag again would be in poor taste and a cop-out. After all, in Harley Quinn's Revenge, we did see that Gotham was changing for the worst, but Harley wasn't really a good principal leading villain. With Mr. J out of the way, I think Jonathan Crane will show Gotham citizens the true meaning of fear. It would be okay if the Joker appeared as a hallucination brought on by a Scarecrow's fear toxin, and then taunted Batman continuously through the game, like over the death of Jason Todd, and of course his own death. Better boss battles. You know where I'm going with this. Arkham Asylum set the bar pretty high, and each foe Batman faced had a different, insane boss battle. With the exception of Bane and the Joker, who were basically clones of one another. But um, fighting Croc in the sewers was amazing and put you on the edge of your seat. It also played to the villain's strength that later WB Games Montreal reduced to, well, this. There I was, holed up in this quarry. When Batman came nosing around, he was getting closer, closer. And? I threw a rock at him. It was a big rock. Arkham City had some decent boss battles, but most felt like a repeat of Scarecrow's levels. I'm looking at you, Rosin Hatter. Yeah. Only the Freeze battle was legendary and worthy of praise, making players literally really think outside the box and how you would approach the Frigid Fiend. No, there'll be no ice puns. We're cool. I really, really want to see more of that and less of these annoying quick time events. Arkham Knight has so much potential, and I want to see the bad guys get their time in the sun. No more clone fights from the previous games, and no more quick time event battles. If we learned anything from Arkham Origins, hopefully it's this. The Bat Caves. Now, though it appeared previously in Arkham Origins, the cave was destroyed by Bane. By the time of the Cold Cold Heart DLC, the cave is not working at 100% anymore. Which leads me to believe that Batman plans on making more caves or bat bunkers in Gotham. Actually, in the later Arkham games, like Blackgate, Batman has already made a mini bunker inside Blackgate Prison, housing some of the gadgets and other equipment. Actually, you do visit it in this scene. Then years later in Arkham Asylum, we saw that Bruce created another small cave, though big enough to house both the Batwing and a bat computer along with some other technology. Since Nightfall already happened by this point, Batman has already created different caves in Gotham. Though, for whatever reason, in Arkham City, he didn't use the Batcave South Central in the subway near Park Row. Nor did he use the Central Batcave located 50 feet below the bottom of Robinson Park Reservoir. Then again, Poison Ivy could have destroyed most of Robinson Park, so that bunker might be ruined. However, with Arkham Knight, if Wayne Tower and the Wayne Foundation building and even the shipping yard are in Arkham Knight, then there is no excuse for these caves not to be present or even mentioned by any of the characters, Oracle, Batman, whoever. They would know of their existence, especially since the Batmobile is in this game and uses a specific type of fuel that you can't get at a gas station or 7-Eleven. Can you just imagine Batman pulling up to a 7-Eleven? Probably get a Slurpee. Hush. This character is a must in Arkham Knight. Hush is such a cool bad guy and even used Superman to nearly kill Batman in one of the Hush arcs by using Poison Ivy's like pheromone spray plant things, which is pretty cool. He was introduced to the Arkham universe in the Identity Theft side mission, where Batman vowed to track down his old friend, another day, Thomas Elliot, who had actually taken on the likeness of Bruce Wayne by stealing people's faces in Gotham. If written into this game right, Hush could work in ways the Joker never could as a leading villain and the mastermind behind everything. For one, like the comics, he could frame Bruce Wayne for murder, steal his fortune and make him penniless, and learn who Batman really is. So a triple threat for the Caped Crusader. Because of his sheer brilliance and different connections in Gotham, over the years he was able to join forces with Two-Face, Poison Ivy, Catwoman, Riddler, and even the Scarecrow. Also, take note that most of these characters will appear in Arkham Knight too. Even Ivy is kind of being teased on the web that she's going to appear in the game in some capacity. So all I have to say is this, DC, bring Hush into Arkham Knight and don't have him be a side character. The Return of the Demons! 
Ra's al Ghul had an amazing plan in Arkham City, but his character just didn't get enough love from the writers. One measly story arc for Batman's deadliest foe? I don't think so, Rocksteady. No! Also an Arkham Knight with burning Gotham to the ground? That was Ra's plan, put in motion after killing Hugo Strange. He even taunts Batman about his future plan to destroy Gotham. And of course, he had a worst death ever thing. Ra's needs to be the guy pulling the puppet strings, because he's that awesome. Now, I know some of you are going to say, well, in Arkham City, both Roz and Talia are, well, dead. My argument could be, well, they might appear to be dead because there's a Lazarus pit. And also, I think both characters will return. Talia especially is a character not to write out just yet. She had a lot of character development and even planted the seeds for future games. Remember, she did put her life on the line for Bruce in the game and even mentioned a special night in Metropolis which could be hinting to the possible introduction of Damian Wayne, the son of Batman. This move wouldn't be that bold for DC and actually help the character to become even more mainstream, which DC wants right now, especially with the whole Damian return thing this summer in July or something. So Damian is a character that needs more love right now. And yeah, even if Roz did really die and he's worm food, which I doubt, Talia could be the leader of the League of Assassins and create different story elements for Arkham Knight. There could be two sides of the story, too, if you really want to play with it. She's either out for revenge, or she's there to assist Batman. Or when they dipped her in the Lazarus Pit, she pulled a Nora Freeze and went insane, and now she hates Batman. So there's a lot the writers can work with if you think about it. Sorry, Victor. One possible thing I think could happen is she could return to Gotham with an army of man-bat ninjas ready to destroy and burn Gotham to the ground because she's just really loopy now. Dr. Kirk Langstrom has also been mentioned in the previous Arkham games, and a leak for Arkham Knight does talk about man-bat being in the game in some capacity. So going by the whole Son of Batman route, it could work for both the return of the Raish al Ghul family and the introduction of man-bat and man-bat ninjas. Personally, I think it would be really cool if the Arkham Knight was a clone of Damian Wayne, though, similar to the Heretic and the Robin R.I.P. storyline, but I suspect that Arkham Knight will be a character in his own right and not a new identity for either Jason Todd, who I'd love to see, or Hush. At least, I hope not. Sidekicks assemble! Not just in the challenge maps, but in free roam! Ever since Arkham City, this is the most requested feature fans have bugged Rocksteady about. And that multiplayer fiasco that WB Games Montreal and the people brought us Brink doesn't count! Gotham is slowly becoming a war zone and Batman faces his greatest threat ever. Also, this is a final Rocksteady game. So with the villains teaming up to take down the Batman and a new foe who personally hates the Batman, think like a Prometheus character, Batman is kind of like outnumbered. But luckily for him, the Dark Knight actually has allies in his fight against crime. If people will actually utilize them, Rocksteady needs to have either Robin or Nightwing playable in Arkham Knight and somehow connected with the story and helping Batman. This is what's separating the ultimate Batman experience outside of the LEGO games. What fans are asking for isn't a stretch or a bad thing either. It's not like either of these characters aren't active or known in this universe. They've already been established. Both played key roles in helping Batman watch over Gotham when Bruce was locked up in Arkham City. Oracle sent Nightwing to save Alfred from Strange's goon squad at Wayne Manor, which was highlighted both in the challenge map DLC for Wayne Manor and the Batcave, and in the Arkham comic series. Robin also had a minor role in City, saving Batman from ninjas, and then again months later rescuing Batman from Harley Quinn. Though he still remained unplayable in free roam, which really irked players. Arkham Origins then dropped the ball with Slade Wilson being only available in the challenge maps, instead of like a Catwoman role in City. This would have been a really cool feature in the game, but for some reason, the developers were like, nah, we don't need to do that. Rocksteady now has the ability to correct that sin and give players what they truly want, which yeah, Harley Quinn playable sounds great, but from what we've heard, it's just in the challenge maps. So please Rocksteady, just let us play as the sidekicks for crying out loud. Based on what we've seen too, it looks like Oracle will be acting as Batman's partner in the game, and players will be able to visit the Clock Tower home to the Birds of Prey. But I'd much rather have Oracle issuing out orders to Nightwing and company though, because it makes more sense for a citywide threat such as Arkham Knight, doesn't it? In doing this, this will also open the door for other developers to make these characters more established when Rocksteady ends their tenure with this game. 
This could lead to many spin-off games starring Nightwing, Robin, and other DC characters, setting up a more shared video game universe and other potential cameos later. If these characters are going to be in the game only as NPCs, I would highly suggest that they contribute more to the story as a whole. Personally, I'm really getting tired of these solo Batman stories though. Even Bruce Timm and Paul Dini realized at some point, Robin and Nightwing are going to show up in a Batman story because they're characters that already exist. Batman will interact with them at some point. After all, there's only so much one hero can do on his own. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. These were my top 10 things I want to see in Arkham Knight. What's yours? Let me know in the comments section below. Agree, disagree? Well, talk to me. Till next time, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you later. Impressive, Batman. This ending would move me to tears if I still had tears to shed. Remember to like and share this video with your peers, or I'll shatter your frozen body like glass.